cool. Second question. I have the most trouble with clients who are currently eating very low calories for their height, weight, age, two levels and gender. Uh, yet they come to us wanting to lose fat. How do you tackle this when they're not wanting to commit to a reverse diet prior to entering a fat loss phase? These clients are often also engaging in quite high levels of cardio and minimal weight training from my experience. Awesome. Brian. So this one, this is actually the question I sort of alluded to um, in the previous one as far as actual adherence. Um, and th this could be, I'm, I'm not saying this is the case with everyone, but a lot of times when you know, trainers or coaches inherit clients like this, um, the actual landscape of their caloric intake in reality isn't what they have portrayed. So I'll, I'll sort of offer an alternative explanation for, for this here. So clients who are eating very low calories for their height, weight, age. So basically below what you would estimate their total daily energy expenditure to be. Um, yet they come to us wanting to lose fat. How do you tackle this when they don't want to commit to a reverse diet? Well, a couple of things to address there. Um, there's a, a high likelihood that they're actually eating more calories than they're reporting. Um, mm. and, and that, that's been shown. I mean, there, there's, um, maybe we can link in the description, the, the actual study that shows this, but, yeah. um, there, there's actual research just showing people, um, this report when they believe they are reporting things accurately. Um, and it, it's, it's fascinating, but how, the second part, how would you tackle this when they're not wanting to commit to a reverse diet? Um, so, so the reverse dieting conversation, I mean, this is a question in a whole separate topic, but let's, let's assume that a reverse diet first is, is accomplishing what we're aiming to have it accomplish, like increasing metabolic capacity. Um, so let's assume that is, is true. And the first scenario, maybe if they're under reporting, they probably wouldn't need a reverse diet anyway, because their intake's actually higher than what they're suggesting. Um, so, but the, the, the root of that question, um, and, and Jacob, you know, I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. I, I'm not convinced like in terms of the, what you gain from adding calories, like the, the increased metabolic capacity is largely due to increases in, in basal metabolic rate, which are tied mostly to lean body mass. But a lot of the additional intake or the expenditure you see from added calories in terms of like the thermic effect of food, um, increased expenditure is a result of the addition of those calories. Those are going to be the, those adaptations are going to be taken away as soon as you remove those colors anyway. So um, like the thermic effect of food is one of the, the biggest benefits of increasing your intake in, in terms of like the effect it has on the expenditure side of the equation. Um, but once you reopen the deficit, you, you lose that benefit immediately. So, um, so I, I think there's a couple things here. And you said like the clients are often engaging in high levels of cardio and minimal weight training. So that part is behavioral that we could definitely address. It's like, okay, let's, let's first get them weight training, um, you know, put them on a resistance training program that in and of itself. I mean, if you, if you take somebody that could be the, the primary fix, um, you know, if they have little weight training experience, you may not need to change really much about their existing diet and you could see like recomposition immediately. Um, and I would probably dial back a little bit of the cardio, you know, it, I guess it, it's all relative to the person. I mean, if it's, if they're slaving away doing two hours of cardio a day, I would rather see them put that um, effort into resistance training and some of those, those caloric resources into building muscle. Um, but I, I, I guess I've seen, like, this is a question I, I asked myself, you know, as, as I was, you know, early in my coaching career. And I would say more often than not, you know, one thing that I think a reverse dieting 
strategy can do is sort of recharge people's willpower. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, you know, if you have somebody who's, who doesn't have much structure, but they're reporting a low intake and then all of a sudden you put them on a reverse diet, it's like all of a sudden they have structure, they may actually be in a deficit with that added structure. You know, you could be say, in theory, it's like you could be adding calories back in on paper, but you could actually, if they're adhering to it, you could be at a net decrease in calories comparatively to what they were consuming before. So, you know, the, the topic of revert, I mean, it's a hotly debated topic, mm. um, but I, I don't think that, you know, if we were to look at like hormonal adaptations to dieting, it's like recovering, you know, thyroid and, and a lot of the basal metabolic, I mean, although the basal metabolism is heavily driven by lean body mass, that's what like hormonal markers for, for metabolism are going to affect. But, um, and I'm not saying they don't exist, but I think more often than not, the efficacy of a reverse diet stems more from the structure and the psychological side of things than it does affecting physiological um, you know, implications for your BMR. So, and outside of BMR, all the other things, like there's, if you think and kind of step by step go through it, those, those adaptations to the increased intake don't stick around when you decrease the intake once again. So, um, yeah, just some food for thought, but I would say, you know, kind of goes back to the previous question. Are they, you know, make sure they're tracking accurately. Mm. If you're in person, you're going to have a better idea than if you inherit somebody remotely. Um, so, yeah. I think that was brilliant. We always need to, as coaches, be super skeptical of what clients are reporting uh, when they tell us they're on very low calories, because most often than not, um, you know, through no fault of their own, sometimes uh, they just don't know how much they're actually eating. Um, they could tell you they're having a thousand calories um, and you go, holy crap, that's so low. But then you look at them and, you know, they could be at quite a high body fat percentage, you know, for their weight and for their reported calorie intake, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, you know, so it's like, cool, that's what they have, uh, or they're trying to have most days, but what about the days where they're, you know, potentially not having a thousand calories? Um, you know, they could try to have a thousand calories and they might do that for two or three days, <clears throat> excuse me, then binge for the remainder of the week. Um, and then just tell you that, Hey, I'm having a thousand calories and, you know, I'm not losing weight. Um, so as Brian said, I think adherence is super important. Um, and I think addressing that, again, comes back to many of the things I discussed uh, earlier in that previous question. But in terms of like the reverse diet, I think, yeah, like Brian said, the utility of the reverse diet doesn't necessarily come from any magical improvements to physiological you know, markers. It's more so the fact that you start giving people food and they can see continued weight loss because number one, they started hearing better because it's easier to adhere to more calories. Number two, uh, even though you're increasing calories, they're still at a calorie deficit because technically that's what a reverse diet is. It's reversing out of the deficit in a stepwise manner. Um, and number three, uh, it bolsters uh, motivation <clears throat> and sustainability of the diet. And, you know, in the context of like fat loss, when we, when should we start reverse dieting? Um, I don't think we should reverse diet with someone who hasn't lost weight yet. Um, I think if you have a client, for sure, you want to see where their calories are at and try and get them on as many calories as possible, you know, losing at the appropriate rate of loss. Um, but in terms of when I would apply a reverse diet, it, I would have with, you know, an overweight client, for example, a really aggressive dieting phase. And then all I would do to, before we go into like a maintenance or like a gaining phase is to start increasing calories, uh, out of that deficit more so because number one we get buy-in at the start with that rapid weight loss and then number two we can slow down the rate of loss as the diet progresses which can uh you know help them just acclimate to that new settling range or you know whatever weight they are now and also it 
allows them to learn. This is the most important thing I see with a reverse diet for like general pop clients is that it teaches them to eat a varied calorie intake. So they don't associate weight loss with one specific calorie range. They can start to see that, holy shit, I can eat more food and lose weight. And then it actually teaches them, you know, how to then, you know, get used to the idea of maintaining um, as opposed to going, cool, we reached our target weight. Let's just eat more food at maintenance now. A lot of people get really funny about that, um, especially when they've seen amazing results, you know, in the dieting phase, uh, they can be quite fearful and afraid to just jump straight into more food. So that really stepwise increase before they've, you know, actually met their target weight, for example, um, can help circumvent that. And I think in terms of the reverse diet, the biggest benefit to it, using it in the, in the scope of a fat loss phase is that by the time they finish the, the fat loss phase, their calories are higher, which is going to mean their hunger will be lower relative to what it was when they're on the lowest calories. Remember, we, we won't uh, negate hunger um, until the cumulative deficit is replaced, which typically means we need to gain a shitload of fat or all the weight back that we lost. Um, but it will mean that they're less hungry than they were on their lowest calories. And that can help maintenance of that new weight at the cessation of the dieting phase. So... I don't use a, a reverse diet for any magical physiological benefits. Yeah, sometimes you see uh, water weight reduction just because you know carbs can be therapeutic in terms of mediating some stress mechanisms uh, on cortisol and who knows what what's really happening. But sometimes you know refeeds and more food can help people just you know drop stress, uh, which means that they lose that water weight. But outside of that, it's I think it should be used after you've got somebody to diet. So that's just the reverse diet, my thoughts on that. Um, but how I tackle clients who are on low calories uh, to just give them more food initially, but within the ranges that they would see or deem appropriate. So for example, um, if I have a client who's on reporting 1100 calories, that's what they're eating. I wouldn't put them straight up to you know, 1800 calories, if that was their, you know, estimated 20% deficit or whatever it was from, you know, their target uh, to help them get to their target weight. I would just use my common sense here and say, cool, if they're reporting 1100 calories, they're likely going to be very uncomfortable eating 1800 calories. And they're going to question that they're not going to buy into that. And they're not going to want to follow that just yet. So maybe start with that middle ground, um, you know, where it's, 1,100 calories and you can slowly start to um, address things from there. So as for the cardio, I actually had a client last week who was doing, we, she was doing three F45 sessions per day, which is 45 minutes times three, a stupid amount of cardio. Um, and she wasn't lifting any weights outside of, you know, those circuit type sessions. Um, and my advice to her was, you know, to slow that down and not completely remove it. I think a lot of coaches, myself included, when I started coaching, uh, would make the mistake of, you know, telling a client, I just stopped the cardio or, you know, you don't need cardio. Well, yeah, they might not need it to achieve their physique goals, but they might really enjoy it. So we need to factor that in as well. So my advice to her was just to ta taper that down to, to two sessions a day, and then we'll try to get it to one, like this is an extreme case. Um, and then we'll try and get it to one day. So you know, small changes to, to what they're currently doing and then trying to slowly add in uh, what they need to be doing. I think it's always to, it's always easier to start by um, reducing the current, uh, you know, behaviors or those excess that we spoke about, um, you know, in a couple of Q and A's ago, we have excess and deficit behaviors. Uh, I think it's easier to, to minimize the excess versus um, adding in uh, new behaviors uh, that for, for many people anyway. Um, and then once you get a handle on that, you can start to add in the re the weight training and build from there. So yeah, hope that that answered your question. Great point. I, I had one last thing to touch on here. Um, so one thing you mentioned that I agree with is like, should we, you know, it, it, when would I reverse diet somebody if they're in a deficit or if they're not, losing weight, then I wouldn't reverse diet. Them. Yeah. And like, by definition, if you're intending on, you know, a reverse diet, 
the problem is, is, is it's often disguised, um, you know, is like a psychological reboot is often disguised mm -hmm. as a reverse diet. So mechanistically, if the protocol you have in and of itself is, is leading to inadherence, like it's too low for them to adhere to, then you can oftentimes add calories and have them actually enter a deficit because yeah. they're, they end up complying. So um, I, I guess what I would say is like adding food, <laughs> in some nice. cases, it'll, I, it'll either create additional compliance and create a bigger deficit or it can close the deficit. But the problem is, is there's two, a lot of people associate it that they don't acknowledge both sides of that. So you, you just have to make sure that you know where the client stands in terms of the, their current landscape. Um, because it can, a reverse diet can mean two totally different things for them, both, you know, in their head um, and the actual effect that it has. So it's, I mean, I sort of just associate reverse dieting with adding calories. And yeah. there are situations when fat loss is stalled where I will add calories, but it's not with the intent, like you said, like by definition to climb reverse out of the deficit, the intent there would be to actually create a deficit yeah. because they're not complying um, to begin with. So just wanted to sort of, yeah, cause I think it, it can be a little bit confusing the, the point we're trying to get across. Yeah. Perfect.